Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I just got done with pool practice. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing a t-shirt on the inside of my tank top. If you have to know, it's because I have sensitive nipples. You know what else you should practice? Making something great at your barbecue. What are the two most American things you can think of? Grilled cheese sandwich. Beef. In the same thing. On top of that, I'll show you how to pickle some onions. So you better strap on your strap-ons because American Ninja Warrior! Okay, first we're gonna start with the pickling of the onions. I have here a red onion. Step one is to skin this. I invented a fast way to skin this and it involves matches. What you do is layer the outside with these sticks of fury and then you simply take a lighter and you fireball. <laughs> Perfectly skinned onions. Next, we need to slice these nice and thin. You can use a chef's knife for a clean cut, but if you want to follow in the footsteps of our forefathers and secede from the British in an act of defiance, I use the underdog American classic butter knife. Nothing says I'm a patriot more than throwing logic out the window and doing things your own way. Feet rule, meters drool. Next, you want to put all your onions into an airtight mason jar. But if you're not hipster chic, you can also use the mason jar's neighboring Hispanic cousin, the plastic yesanyar. Now you want to add boiling water. If you're not sure if the water's boiling, you can do the finger test. Uh -huh. Fill it about three quarters of the way. Add the lid and let this stew while we make our brine. To start, we need three teaspoons of sugar. You can add more or less depending on how sweet you like it. Then two liberal but very American teaspoons of salt. About a teaspoon and a half of whole peppercorns. Half of cumin in my mouth. Cumin in my kitchen. Two shakes of my secret ingredient. Cinnamon And a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Mix it together with your teaspoon and then pour it right into the onions. The last thing you're going to add to your pickled onions before putting it to bed is pickles. Not just any pickles, you have to use heart shaped pickles. Cause you know what the key to every great recipe is? Love. Put the cap on and yes and born the fuck out of it. Then put it in the fridge and let it pickle for three days. I know it's a long time, so if you need to, schedule your July 4th cookout to July 7th. Hey baby. With the miracle of time, three days has gone by and I've yet to shower or change. Let's cook our short ribs. The first thing you want to do is identify the smallest ribs with the least amount of meat. We do this because this is America, and segregating the little guys from the big guys via a corrupt financial system is the American way. The next step is optional. I'm trimming off some of the fat of these ribs. These are super fatty, so if you also feel societal pressure to be beautiful, then trim trimming away. Look at all this fat! We have enough to make our own Kardashian! Next, line up all your ribs for seasoning. Start with a hefty amount of salt, lots of crackety blackety, and granulated garlic. Then turn them on their sides and do it all over again. Make sure you get all the sides. Lastly, for the tops and bottoms, I like to sweep up the cutting board to make sure you don't miss any of that good kush. Boom! Pew, 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 pew. To the browning. Heat up a heavy bottom pot or baking tray until it's smoking hot. Add an oil with a high smoke point. I'm using canola. Watch out for the more delicate oils like olive because it burns easier than a ginger in the spring. Cook each side until brown. The meat can burn quickly so watch it closely. Each side should take about 1-2 to two minutes to be brown. Remember, we aren't cooking this all the way through, we just want caramelization. This is what you're looking for. Beautiful golden brown all the way around. Remove the meat from the pot. Add in some roughly chopped onions, carrots, celery, and garlic. Cook them until it sweats out a bit. By the way, at some point I cut my hand, and it's probably dripping into the pot. It's okay though, because- <laughs> Next, add in a heaping spoon of tomato paste. Stir well and cook for a few seconds. Then three tablespoons of flour. Mix it together to form our roux. Now we need to add red wine. But first, story time. <laughs> I used to make jewelry for a living when I lived in Seattle. One day, I had a customer who told me he matched on Bumble with a 1400 pound grizzly named Lucille. I didn't believe it either until he showed me the pics. Fast forward two years later and he wants to propose to her and asked if I could make her a ring. It was my first time making a size 47 ring, but I guess I can now call myself a bear ringer. Add about half a bottle. Let it come to a boil and reduce it down to about half. Now add in two cups of beef stock. Before we add our meat back in, a couple of final ingredients. Here are some fresh thyme. One tip, I didn't take the stems off. This was a mistake later on. Make sure you take the time to remove the stems. Next, some red chili flake for a little spice. And lastly, some smoked paprika. Paprika doesn't really have much of a flavor, I just add it because it makes me look well rounded. After a quick few stirs, you can add in your meat and any other meat juice that accumulated on the plate. The ribs don't have to be completely submerged in the sauce, but they should be at least half covered. After this, the last step is to cover it up and pop it into a 300 degree oven for 2-3 to three hours or until fork tender. And boom! Two hours later, look at this baby. It's so tender. 
It's falling apart in me tongues. The smell is incredible. Okay, next step is to remove all the meat and reduce the sauce down. Keep reducing until you get a consistency you're happy with. Also, you may want to skim off that red stuff. That's thunder thigh juice, baby. Okay, so it's the next day. I pretty much pass out after skimming the fat and shredding the beef, so here are me leftovers. In a pan, cook some bacon bits. It will add a nice crunch to the sandwich. If you're kosher, then skip this part. There's nothing wrong with being kosher though. We Americans believe in the freedom to practice any religion, as long as it's Jesus. Next, dump some of the bacon grease out and fry your short ribs. We want to get some nice, crispy chunks of beef. As you can see, we're getting really good caramelization. At this point, add in a couple spoons of sauce. The heat will melt the sauce down and infuse it into the meat. Go ahead and remove the meat and put it on the side. Now we're finally ready to put this bad boy together. So here I have some arugula, our three day pickled red onions, a slice of mild cheddar and pepper jack cheese. You can pick any cheese you want, but these two in particular are really good for grilled cheese. And a really rustic bread. You want something that's very crusty and a tiny bit dry. Those moist, soft breads don't hold up very well and don't have as much crunch as this one. There are three ways you can tell if it's a nice rustic bread. First, if you see some medium-sized pores in the bread. Second is if it feels firm and crispy but not flaky. And the last method is if you smack two breads together and you listen for the noise it makes. I'm rustic. Perfect. Bread selection is key, especially if you're trying to create decent food porn. Your two slices need to be perfectly symmetrical, so line them up and choose wisely. I'm going with these two. The rest of these, garbage. First start with your cheddar cheese. It's a mild cheddar, so he seems like a bottom. Then your beef layer. Don't hold back, boo boo. Then a couple of cheese pieces in the middle for extra glueiness. Lots of crispy bacon bits. Then your pickled red onions, but make sure you pat them dry of the brine. You don't want your bread to get too soggy with all this moisture. Then some arugula, and top it off with the rest of the pepper jack. Give it a good press, and we're ready to grill this grilled cheese. Okay, so I cleaned out the pan a little and added some butter. Grill each side on medium low heat. Don't turn it up too high. It'll burn faster than the cheese can melt. Give it a little press and leave it. Don't touch it. You don't have permission to touch it. I know it's tempting, but it's called consent, guys. Wait for about three to four minutes before taking a peek. If it's golden brown, then it's ready to flip. Add in a little more butter for the other side and make sure it doesn't fall apart mid-flip. Ho ho ho! Look at that, baby. It's so crispy. Listen to this. It's absolutely amazing. The second side should only take half the time, so keep a lookout so it doesn't burn. Next step is to cut this bad boy. Number one rule of sandwiches is that they always need to be cut diagonally, not vertically. I don't know what it is. Something with geometries or the isosceles integrity. It just tastes better. Diagonally. Trust me. Second rule of sandwich cutting is to use a bread knife with serrated edges like this. You want to make a clean cut so that it doesn't mash up all the inside gush and ruin your perfect center cut. The knife smells fear. So cut quickly and with confidence. Here we go. Look at that baby. How sexy does that look? Let me take a couple thumbnails and we'll dig in. Okay, back. Here we go, guys. Guys, this may be one of the best things I've ever made on this vlog. The beef is so flavorful and tender. You hear crispy, buttery crunch of the bread. The whole thing is covered in gooey cheese. It's so damn good. This is a must for your July 4th barbecue. You need to drop the hot dogs and burgers now and switch to short rib sandwiches ASAP. -P. The only thing I say I would regret is adding the cinnamon to the pickling brine. It's not a bad flavor, but it just doesn't work too well with this. Who embarrassed me in front of my friend? That's it for today, guys. Make sure you look at this. Follow me over at Cheesy Does It Cooking. Guys, I'm hanging out with my niece right now. She was a little baby when she was in that beef and barley video, and it's actually one of my more popular videos. So she's kind of become a big deal. Hey, little baby. What's it like to be a little celebrity now? Oh, fame is a bitch. I can't go two seconds on the street without the pouch getting all up in my shit. Pass me that Hennessy. Drink up, mom. Baby needs a little kick in her titty juice. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, when you're cutting, make sure that you pick out all the extra little chunks of matchsticks that are in your onions. It's gonna add a weird flavor that you're probably not gonna like. I just got done reciting the Pledge of Allegiance for 15 kittens in a uh, abandoned zoo. I just got done flossing my teeth with the blood of the British. I just got done finding that needle in the haystack. I just got done playing baseball with Barry Manilow and Smash Mouth. I just got done giving a bald eagle a haircut. I just got done riding my Harley 
into the back of another Harley. I just got done picking oranges out of my bathtub. I just got done teaching small children how to ride a camel and then milk a goat. <laughs> Bye. Bye.